What's up everybody, Bro Cam here. I'm gonna show you today how to build the uh, K6ARK 3D Principle CW Paddles. Um, there's a couple different configurations you can do, but I'm gonna put a link to his printables uh, page for this uh, in the link. And um, from there, you'll find all the parts I use. It's, it's on the page for the printables. Uh, so, oops. Let's jump on over and watch us build it. Uh, first, I'm gonna show you the 3D print run. Uh, it's a really quick print. I got it set on extra draft to like 0.28 layer height. Uh, it printed in like 45 minutes. That's with printing a prime tower, so I can get a pretty little time-lapse effect going. Um, yeah, quick print. Um, he recommends uh, Pet G. I'm using uh, PLA. Uh, I expect it will break down much quicker, but that's fine. Like I said, print in 45 minutes. It's nothing. I can, and I assembled one soldering and everything in 15, 20 minutes. And that's while fumbling around the camera. So here we go. All right, so this is everything you're going to need. You're going to need your 3D printed pieces. Uh, you're going to need... Uh, I guess you don't need these, but I think it makes it easier. Little snippers. Uh, again, don't need. Makes it easier. Some very fine um, tweezers. Uh, a, whoops. A Phillips head screwdriver. And a... Uh, what size is this? H1.5. Uh, which I think might just be 1.5 millimeter. I don't know. Uh, you're going to need some wire. This is very thin. This is 34 gauge nichrome wire. This is what, um, Adam recommends. So I just got that. And then... These are also what Adam recommends, some set screws, uh, and then some Phillips set screws for the ground. And then I got a different jack than what he had. He had the gold plated one, but I already had these on hand from a different project. Uh, so these just have, there's TRS uh, female, um, and they have a little screw doodad so that you can uh, keep it inside the thing. So, put those away. So we just need one of these with one of these. We need one Phillips screw. Boop. And I know my table looks dirty. It's not. It's just burnt and stained. And I have not got a cut mat for it. So uh, that's what it looks like. Uh, then the set screws, I'm going to wait because they're very small. And I will knock them over and lose them. But we're going to need four of them. Two for each side. And I'll show you what those do when we get there. Uh, anyways, his instructions say to take about an inch. I do a little more. Uh, there's a ton of 250 feet of this stuff, so it's pretty pretty thin. But what I like to do um, is don't put this down once you cut it because you'll never find it again because it's tiny. I like to put a little bend in this. Just a little bit, almost not quite 90 degrees. That's a little more than 90 degrees, but that way I can hook it in and then kind of pinch it shut get some helping hands and hold the pieces uh, if you don't have helping hands and you're getting into a lot of soldering stuff I recommend you get some it makes life easier it really does um, this wire is very thin it can be kind of hard to handle all right just tender soldering iron here I have a fume extractor going. It's very quiet. Touch it. Oh, I've also got the temperature set to about 300. 
pretty low because everything's pretty small here. We're not really having to put a lot of uh, thermal energy into anything. Uh, that's one side done. Flip it over. Let's do the other side. And there you go. Tilt this in from the bottom here. And then I'll take something like a this, and I'll just carefully push this down the middle. Oh, let's turn this so I'm not spreading apart these uh, fingers too much. So it's lined up with the hole, so I just kind of hold back here because this is a solid thing. Don't hold up here because they're flimsy. And just kind of push, and then you gotta push with some force, but it's starting to go. And so I will just reposition so I feel a little more comfortable. There we go. Now it's in. Now we can take our uh, doobly doo that holds this secure and do that. So. Now we don't have to worry about that falling out. This is where the tweezers come in handy. Take the tweezers. And you're going to go to the one on this side is going to go to this hole. The one on this side is going to go to this hole. It's going to be the, if you think of this as the bottom and this is the top, it's going to go to the topmost hole. So what you do, what I like to do take this way out here. This is the one on this side. Bend it back. I try to do big sweeping bends rather than small sharp tight bends. So you're going to just take this and feed it in from here. And once you get it going, you can come back on the side and pull it out. And this is why I I say a little more than an inch. It's a little uh, a little easier when you've got more to work with. So then we're gonna do the same on this side. Gonna take this out, big sweeping bend here, if I can grab it. Go into that hole. Hopefully you can see, I'm trying to position it for you. And just shove it in that hole. And it's out the other side. I'm gonna pull it out. Now that those are kind of in, they're not gonna fall out of there easily. Uh, I like to start my ground uh, screw. I am just butterfingers today. Uh, start my ground screw first before I stick it in. Uh, oh, just make sure it goes in straight. And then. That way I'm not trying to balance it too much. So this is where this, that ground is going to sit. It's going to go right here. And then we're going to screw the screw down on top of it. So it's going to go right in here. It's going to pinch it between that and the plastic. Shoo. What that'll do. Kind of position like that. And then push it forward. And line it up with the pegs back here. Make sure you're not pinching this wire. Right, and then we could just, it's a friction fit, you know, just squeeze it a bit. Squeeze it a lot, apparently. And that one does not want to go in. Oh, there we go. All right. And if we did it right, we'll see that this ground lug is underneath this screw so now we can take this tighten it down the rest of the way so now that that's tightened down i'm going to finish tightening that this nut now we get to the little bits that we can lose and let's grab whoa not that many just four of them all right so these are pretty small so don't lose them, because you'll never find them again. And 
see, they're just set screws. So uh, what I like to do is I hold this like this and I put my thumb on the back side of this here to brace it. Now I'm not putting a ton of force on it, but just because when I put this in, I'm going to be screwing in. Uh, so we're just going to keep screwing this in and eventually you'll see it poking in back there. Um, I think his instruction said about a millimeter is what you want sticking out. Um, I think that's probably good about there. And what I'll do is see you just by pushing that set screw in, this wire is pushed back out a little bit. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tuck it back because we don't want the wire to make contact. We actually want the set screw to make contact with this screw. And that will complete our circuit. So, uh, now that that's in there, you can just take this and just give this a couple twists. Oh, usually, usually you can just give it a couple twists and it comes right off. There it goes. And that's just garbage now. And while we're on this side, let's go ahead and put in this set screw down here. And that is for, um, I think, adjusting the... Uh, Ooh, I almost lost that one. I think that's for adjusting the uh, the force needed. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Again, bracing the back side of this with my thumb, I'm squeezing my thumb in there. And then this one, just go in. And same kind of thing, it's very hard to show on camera because it's way down in there, but uh, See if I can get a frame of it or so and I can show it. See if I can. Right, right in there. So there's a piece of plastic that runs this way that that set screw's pushing on that makes it, it's a thicker piece so that gives it more force. So it's stiffer. So uh, let's go over to this side. Way too stiff. Let's back that one off a bit. That one needs to be more stiff. I think I need to Turn that in more. One more on this one. This is where you can just spend a little time playing with it, getting it to how you like it. Before I snap this on, I'm gonna plug it in, make sure it works real quick. This is my Morserino. The battery is almost dead, so hopefully I can get it to turn on. And the first time you ever put something into these TRS sleeves, they're very hard to get in. Oh, but once they're, they go the first time, they're usually pretty good. All right. All right. There we go. Oh, that was, see, I'm still learning, but go so now I can go ahead and close this up uh, what I like to do is I don't put glue on any of these surfaces what I do is I'll close this up on my way back here I don't put glue on any of these surfaces I'll close it up dry like this oh. man tight fit and then what I'll do is I'll take some cyanacrylate, some CA, and uh, I'll just put a dot like on each of these four corners. Um, not a ton, just enough to kind of touch both sides. If I can get my glue to come out. Oh, shoot, see, there it goes. 
I guess I had a little clog there. Anyways, that's gonna cause an issue later. But just a little drop, just to keep the two halves closed. And that's all I gotta do. And then uh, for this, this is a, the leg um, holder. You just snap it in. It's really hard to put in, but once it comes in, it ain't coming out. So yeah, this one doesn't need any glue at all to attach to this. It's a very tight fit. I don't think this is coming out ever. Well, I hope you found that informative. Um, this is a really good, I think, economical way to get into learning how to use a paddle. Uh, speaking from my beginner experience, it was uh, 42 cents of filament, which is about 16.7 grams. It would take about 35 minutes to print on my printer. Uh, the uh, thin wire I had was 807 after taxes. And then both the screws, Phillips screws and the set screws were 1302 uh, together. That's uh, with uh, taxes and everything included. So all in all for one paddle, it's 2151 but you can also you can make several paddles from all the parts you get but it's a quick math and you can make 12 sets of these paddles with the set screws being the limiting factor you get you can make f uh four there's 50 50 pieces so 50 divided by four 12 and a half. Uh, if I multiply the filament cost, which is 42 cents by 12, that's $5. So you can make 12 paddles for a whopping $26.13. So I think this is, it's really not bad. You can make these and give them to your friends. You can um, try and coax them into learning CW. Uh, give them away. Keep them on hand for when they break because you know, I use PLA and not uh, Pet G, so I, I, it's a great. Uh, definitely try it out. Uh, I mean, put your thoughts down below. Uh, what do you think of this project? I, I'm, I've always seen it, but I never tried to actually build it. I was impressed with how easy it was to build, and uh, you know, I, I think I'm definitely gonna be looking at learning a lot more CW stuff because this is uh, this is really cool. I'm really enjoying this kind of stuff. But uh, subscribe if you want to see some more kind of stuff. I try to do everything on the cheap stuff I got laying around. Uh, obviously, a 3D printer is not cheap, but, you know, it's an investment. Once you have it, I can make stuff like this. So thanks. Thanks for watching.